We're in lab eight in our series on URA, Universal Remote Access or Direct Access. So let's go ahead and start with our new URA client server. So the client server is going to be a 2012 server. And that is because you have to have at least the enterprise version of the client in order to make this work with direct access. So since we don't have that, we'll just go ahead and use our 2012 server. So let's start by doing all the usual things. We're going to uh, go ahead and set the IP address. And first, of course, we want to make sure we're set to internal, just like our other virtual machines. There we are. Now let's go to our IP version 4 settings. Change to static. Okay, click OK to that. All right, now we're going to join this computer to the URA server the domain, uh, widget LLC. Change the name of the computer to URA client and the domain widget LLC.internal. Now we'll put our administrator name and password. And welcome to the domain. All right, while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and go back to our DC01 and open up Active Directory Users and Computers. From here, we're going to create a group called Direct Access Clients GG. And we'll put that right in the users container. So right click on users, choose new group. And we'll leave it as global and security. Let's go ahead and add the URA client as a member. Make sure you change your object type to have the checkbox for computers. And then it'll show up. All right, let's switch over to our URA client again. Log back in after the reboot. And you can see I made a mistake by logging into the local computer. So we're going to go ahead and log back out. And make sure we're logging in as widget LLC. Backslash administrator. Now we'll run our GP update slash force. And then we will do a GP result. And we should see that the group policy has also been updated. So that looks good. It's no S at the end, just GP result. And we can see that we did get the direct access client object applied. So very good. 
We did not get the server one because uh, in this particular case we are considered a client. All right, we're going to go ahead and minimize that, and now we need to open up the control panel. And let's go to the Windows firewall. And we want to make sure that everything is green, so it's all turned on, which it is. Now we want to go to the Advanced Settings and then click on the connection security rules and we successfully have our direct access policies so that's good that means everything is looking the way it should all right let's go ahead and get into our powershell right click and choose run as administrator and we're going to go ahead and type in get and capital letters do not matter da connection status and that's exactly what we want to see connected locally that means that we are not connected to the internet we're connected locally to the domain so that is correct so let's switch back to the URA server make sure you're on the right one you're logging in as the domain administrator let's go ahead and open up the uh, PowerShell and we are going to do the get net IP address get dash net IP address alright let's scroll through all these different IP addresses and we are looking for a couple things one is the 6 to 4 adapter there it is right there 6 to 4 and we also want to make sure we have the IP HTTPS interface. So both of those are there. That means so far, so good. Everything is going exactly the way it should be. So now we're going to move our URA client to the Internet. We're going to fool it into being on the Internet. And we're going to do that by going to Machine, Settings, and Network. And we're going to change this from Internal Network I'm sorry, I can't keep that the way it is, but the INT net to the URA test network. So you can go ahead and type that in if, it's, if you don't see it in the drop-down list. Go ahead and click OK to that, and now we're going to go in and set our new IP address. So first we had to be on the inside of the network in order to join the computer to the domain. Now we're going to be on the outside of the network to test our direct access. So let's go ahead and go to our IP address here, and we'll change this to... 131.107.0.76 and then our gateway is going to be 131.107.0.2 which is what is going to be our URA server here and then our DNS is going to be 131.107.0.2 click OK we're good now all right Let's switch back to the URA server. And now we're going to make sure that the DNS role is installed. So you do that by going to the Add Roles and Features. Next. Next. Confirm the server name. Next. And just check the box. I've already done this earlier to save time for DNS server. Check that box, click next, next, and finish, and then it will complete installation. Now we will open up the DNS manager by going to Tools, DNS, and we're going to create a new forward lookup zone called widget LLC, not dot internal, but the public name dot com. So go ahead and choose primary zone. Zone name is widget LLC dot com. all defaults here okay now we'll see our new zone which is great I'm going to create a couple of host records the first one is you just right click anywhere on there and choose new host our host is our first host is going to be NCSI which is going to help us fool the 
the network into thinking we're on the outside of it. 131.107.0.2. Very good. The second one is going to be you are a server, and we're going to do the same IP address 131.107.0.2. Okay, let's just check our work, make sure no typos, that looks perfect. All right, close DNS, and now we're going to go into Tools, Internet Information Services. We're going to create a website that, again, is going to assist us in our pretending that we're on the outside of the network. So all you do is expand that and then go ahead and right-click on Sites and choose Add Website. All right, the name of the website is going to be widget llc.com which is the name of our zone and the physical path is going to be the c inet pub and then you want to make a new folder click there make a new folder and then call it com c o m then click OK. Make sure that the path is cinetpub backslash com after you create the folder. All right, now we have a port. By default, the website is going to connect to port 80, but we already have a website on port 80 called default website. So we're going to change that to port 81. Go ahead and click OK when you're done. Now we're going to open up Explorer. Go to the C drive and find that path, inetpub.com. And we're going to right click in there and choose new text document. And we're going to call it NCSI. All right, so where a lot of people are going to make a mistake is they're going to call it NCSI.txt, but they're not going to have extensions turned on. So make sure you go to view and make sure file extensions name is checked. Otherwise, you're going to create an ncsi.txt.txt, and that's not going to work. So turn that view on, and then you'll name this thing properly to NCSI text. All right, so double click on that text file and just type in widget LLC NCSI. Okay, we can close all that. Now we need to go back into our firewall. So let's minimize server manager, click on control panel and windows firewall. And because we created a non-standard port, we need to add port 81 to allow access to that website. So click on advanced settings, inbound rules, new rule. We're going to choose a port next TCP specific port 81 next allow the connection next all three of these should be checked next we'll call it uh, port 81 in or whatever you want it doesn't really matter we're not coming back to that and just confirm that it's there and it's green now one of the things I like to do also is go to properties and then go to the advanced and allow edge traversal just in case that becomes an issue later with trying to get in from another subnet. All right, so that's all done. We can close our firewall. Now we need to go back to our URA client and we'll make a couple other changes. We need to open up the registry. So what we're gonna do is type in reg edit from a command prompt or just from a run command, doesn't matter and we see our registry. Now from here we need to drill down to HK local machine system current control set services expand that a little bit type the letter N that takes you down there faster until you find the uh, NLA SVC and then parameters and then internet all right we have a whole bunch of keys over here that are already created we don't have to create them we just need to edit them so our first one is the change active dns probe content change active 
there we go or the active DNS probe content there we go and that's going to be the version 4 so we're going to change that to 131.107.0.2 all right, next one we're going to change is the active DNS probe host. Active DNS probe host. There we go. And we're going to change that to NCSI dot widget LLC dot com. That looks good. Next one is change the active web probe content. Active web probe content. There it is. And we'll change that one to widget LLC NCSI. Now we'll go to the active web probe host and change that one to NCSI dot widget LLC dot all right now we need to restart our clients sometimes on the URA server after you start it all up you have some red X's in here but if you just wait a little bit I started out with two or three red X's and now I'm down just to the DNS one and uh, uh, you can take a look at the error if you want, uh, but uh, it, it usually if you just wait a little bit, it'll eventually clear up all of it. And just hit the refresh button until you see green all the way across. If your client doesn't show up in the remote access settings where it says remote client access, and then take a look at the status and you can see that there's a couple of errors still. One of them says the network location service. This has to do with the certificate binding. So we can fix that by changing the binding order. Click on Tools, and then go to the Group Policy Management. And we're going to edit the server policy for direct access. We will right click on the server for direct access and edit and then we're going to go to the computer configuration all right computer configuration policies administration administrative templates network ssl settings and there's the order right there And here we will enable the policy and we'll click apply. And then since we're on the server we need to affect, we'll go ahead and do a GP update slash force. And then we'll do a GP result to make sure it's still being applied. Let's also go to each of the direct access rules and make sure that there is no filtering under the WMI filtering. And as long as it says none, then we're okay there. After it's complete, you can go ahead and go to the network connections and you should see this workplace connection and the network itself shows the limited connection because you can't get out to the internet, but that's okay. But we're showing our, our uh, Workplace connection, we can right click on it and we can see that we are configured correctly and there's no internet access. And in the remote client access, remote client status, you should see your workstation appear at that point.